I might have everything set up the way it needs to be. Doubt it. Yes. <laughs> sure you do. Yeah. All right. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah. Well enough. You're like, you're like, sure. Shut up. Just hit the button. <laughs> we already did sound check like seven times. Let's go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 86 for Friday, the 8th of July, 2016. This is, your, this is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. Man, it's been a week. How you doing, Ken? Man, I, uh, I had some Taco Bell a couple hours ago. That shit ain't... That shit ain't. <laughs> That's the haps right there, Taco Bell. Don't eat Taco Bell before podcasting. Yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. when it was an hour. Like that's that's probably a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, how's your week been, dude? Uh, uh probably the same as everyone's. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. You, it started you, you, out really cool. Yeah, yeah. You, it started out with a birthday. Yeah. So my birthday was last weekend. Yeah, we totally didn't even mention it last week. Yeah, yeah. That was that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah. Yay, another year older. Yeah. No, I mean, it was it was cool because my birthday always always is conjoined with the 4th of July holiday weekend. So I always get multiple barbecues in a row. Yeah. Uh, I, I pretty much for four days straight was either going to a cookout or hosting a cookout, having campfires, drinking some beers. Right. Uh, good conversations, good times. It was cool, man. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so I... Uh... We, we, we found out this week that we are definitely moving into, into our new house on Saturday, tomorrow. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, totally cool, right? Wow, um, that snuck up on us. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't lying. So this week I've been trying to get trying to get uh, uh, utilities hooked up. Oh. Um, oh. And I got to tell you, so it only took about 20 minutes to actually get the internet hooked up for the house. They basically just handed me a new a new cable modem and an Apple TV that came for free with, with signing up for service, like right on, you know, fourth gen Apple TV for a uh, 64 gig. Like, here you go. Here's a, here's a new Apple TV. So that was cool. Um, ironically, none of the services that I signed up for, such as, I don't know, electricity, water, trash. Um, what else is there? Uh, maybe that maybe that's it. I know there's a couple. Of, oh, natural gas, like you know, for the for the stove and stuff like that. You can't do any of those online. Not a single one of them can you sign up for online, at all. What, you, you what about like auto pay? Like um, uh, some of them have that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But no, no, like no, e pay. Like, no, like like to, for the, for the water place, I went to the uh, the the Wasilla City Hall. And had to fill out a form that, that was dated from like 1986 or so. And it was basically just my name, my address, and when service needed to start. Uh -huh. Like, this is, this is like day two HTML. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm certain this can be automated. <laughs> um, for, uh, for electricity, I had to... They wanted me to fill out a form and have copies of my ID, so I emailed it to them, but they could, that wasn't good enough because there's no way to pay for it online. So you have to pay to start up the service. It's like a $5 membership fee for the co-op, and then there's like a $15 like, like paperwork fee or whatever. So there's no way to do that online, although you can submit all of your paperwork and stuff like that. You still have to go into a store to pay. Oh, like, okay. I'm, I'm not making this up. So I sat there and emailed the forms to her while I was at her desk. So she could go and print them out. <laughs> and then she put my bill on a sticky and I took that to the cash, the, to the cashier and I paid it. I, I wonder if they accept faxes. It, every place was like, well, we can fax you the information. <laughs> and and the, the old joke came to mind. Like we don't have fax where I live, you know? Like, yeah. Well, where yeah. do you live? Uh, 2016. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god was, fuck that yeah it was it was ridiculous like all of them were like that it was 
it was stupid. However, I finally got all hooked up and we are moving in. Uh, well, we get the keys tomorrow. I'm not going to say we're moving in because our first shipment doesn't arrive on until Monday. And then Tuesday and Wednesday for the next shipment. And then my stuff from Korea, I found out, is still sitting in Seattle. But at least it made, made it through customs, which is good oh. because I've got soju in there. <laughs> Slut. Yeah. Hey, I, I declared it. It's legal. I just figured it might take a little longer. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Um, and of course, that's where all my podcasting equipment is, my mixing board, my uh, mic stands, and all that other stuff. Um, speaking of podcasting equipment, uh, oh. I have to mention something real quick. So we have several uh, 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 lists out there for people to help us out. You can go to patreon.com slash virtual misery. Yep, you can course. go to PayPal. If you go to our webpage, virtualmisery.com, you can go to PayPal and just donate one time. Or if you really want to, you can look, uh, there's a links for an Amazon wish list, And one of those items was actually purchased. We actually got a, uh, a gift from a fan. I've been meaning oh. to mention it for a while now. Oh, yes. Uh, That's, so, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, so I replaced my Yeti microphone with this ATR 2100. And hopefully the last several weeks, you've been able to tell the difference in the sound. I can tell the difference in the sound when I'm editing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> So uh, it was a, a bit of an anonymous gift, so I don't know exactly who, who sent it, but it's uh, really highly appreciated. So I know you're listening, and uh, it's really awesome. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th um, definitely. Thanks. Just, I mean, little things like that. I mean, this is uh, probably 50 bucks, but, you know, it goes a long way. So really appreciate it because this is something I didn't have to convince the wife I needed to buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just start putting a bunch of stuff on there and just hopefully somebody is like like yeah yeah you know what i get an extra 20 bucks here's a uh here's a new mic cable you know <laughs> hey save my other 12 break <laughs> yeah um oh, that's tell you awesome. what, man. uh so I i'm gonna jump right into my geeky thing of the week uh ios 10 the beta release the public release yeah they came out what was it yesterday yesterday yeah, I've been playing with it since I finally got it downloaded because when it came out, I was on shitty public Wi-Fi and couldn't get it downloaded. Of came course. home, got it downloaded last night, and I've uh, been playing with it since. I got to say, other, uh, other than two issues that I've found, it's pretty amazing. Like, oh, it's, yeah? It's, okay. it's, not, it's not like a, a revolutionary product, you know? Um, it's definitely like the next iteration. But what it does, so iOS 7 really changed the way that the iOS looks. Yes, with the the uh, muted color or the uh, yeah the, the flattened flattened look and all that yeah. got rid of the uh, the the well, what the hell do you call it when shit looks like the real thing or whatever like no notepad was you know or a calendar didn't look like a calendar anymore it looked like an app you know right. um, and uh, we well so seven came out and I, I jumped on board for for seven I got the got the beta for that. Really loved it. Eight came out, added features. Nine came out, added basically stability and you know enhanced a couple of features. But really, it was, it was a stability release and a optimization. Because uh, going from six to seven, it kind of got a, got thinned down a little bit. But between seven and eight, it got bloated back up. Nine kind of thinned out the, the the software a little bit, made it a little speedier, a little snappier. Ten is from of course it's still in the public beta. All the features that, that that I've noticed, I mean, there's still, still some that aren't in the public beta yet. But uh, the new notification screen is awesome. The new um, uh, the, the the mission control or whatever they want to call it, the the where you swipe to the side and it brings up all the little like, the little widgets and stuff like that. Oh, you're right, right, right. Yeah, that's amazing. That works so good. The only two glitches I've found are and probably not even glitches. They're probably just optimizations. When you open an app, <laughs> that's what Apple calls the glitches. Yeah, yeah. Optim further optimizations. Yeah. Um, when you open an app, you know it does a little zoom in thing where it zooms and takes over the whole screen. Yeah. That animation and the animation when you hit the home button and it zooms it back down is still a little little sketchy. It's not fluid. It's still, it's still jumpy. Yeah. But it doesn't affect the usability of it at all. It's just a little aesthetic thing. The other problem is when I'm in my truck, whether I'm hooked up by USB or hooked up by Bluetooth, it'll randomly pause my podcast that I'm listening to. 
Oh, that, that wow. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. I, I haven't tried that in any other app other than Pocket Cast because I'm a devout Pocket Cast user. Um, so I don't know if that's just that app or if it's an OS thing, but uh, yesterday it was working fine. Today it pauses randomly, sometimes multiple times in rapid succession. Sometimes it doesn't even bother with it at all. It just plays it for like an hour and a half and you're fine. So those are the only two things I've found so far. Um, other than that, I'm loving it, man. You're going to love this update. Awesome. It, it, quick question, though, as a beta tester, because I've never done the, the Apple betas. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a, a method for bug reporting? There is. Uh, when you, anytime that you have the beta certificate on, on your phone, it actually opens up a little, oh, I wish I had my phone in front of me. Um, oh, there it is right there. It's a, uh, a little app for feedback. So you can go oh. in there and, and give it feedback. And of course it take, it captures whatever's running on your, on your phone at the time and all that stuff. So they want you to report it as soon as it happens. Uh, I have found, I've, I often report things, but typically what I'll do is I will wait until it happens multiple times and I kind of get a feel of what's going on with it. So uh, I'm not just like shooting off. Hey, it paused. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. You can provide oh, better feedback. Yeah, it, it pauses you know, erratically and, it, and sometimes rapidly in succession only when using this app. And, Oh, and by the way, the podcast app is no longer on my phone. The first thing I did when I when I put iOS 10 on there was get rid of all the apps I didn't use. <laughs> right, that's right. That is one thing that they that they yeah. added you can get rid of. It, and it, it doesn't save any space. The kernel is still there. The, the 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 everything's still there. It just gets rid of the app, the icon. Just right. So you no longer need that folder where you dump in all the crap that you don't use, but you right. can't do. Right. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's purely aesthetic, and, and, and I'm fine with it. I'm good with it. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. But uh, that, that was kind of the, the geekiest thing I did, except I did try out this new app that came out officially this week, although I haven't successfully used it very much because I'm not too much into the game itself. But apparently you're, you've got a little experience with it. Pokemon Go. Oh, my gosh, this game. <laughs> I, I had no intention of getting this game. Isaac, on the other hand, it's something that's way up his alley. He is a huge Pokemon fan. Well, yeah, and his name in chat room is Pokey Isaac Mon. Yeah, exactly. That should, that should tell you something. <laughs> yeah, so somebody tweeted, what was it, two days ago, I think? Somebody tweeted that, that uh, just a few minutes until Pokemon Go or something like that. I was like, oh, I, I've heard of this. Mm -hmm. Well, it, and then, like, two seconds later, another tweet pops up, and it's somebody like, yeah, Pokemon Go, and then, like, another and another and another. I was like, what the fuck? All right, I got to check this out. So, so either you're following the wrong people, or this is something you had to try. <laughs> right. It, well, probably both. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, fine. So I downloaded it probably within five minutes of mm -hmm. it being live on the App Store. And it was a little slow going at first because they had some server issues. Go figure I, although I got, I have to give them give them uh, accolades. It's a very small app. Oh yeah! Oh, I it downloaded, took. I downloaded it over LTE in a bad area of coverage, and it only took like thirty seconds to download. Right. Yeah, it took no time to download and install. It was it was up and running. It just wouldn't connect to the servers for a while. <laughs> uh, but no, in in the game, the game is made by the same people that do Ingress. If you guys. Right. Remember way back when we had our old friend Charlie on the podcast. Mm -hmm. He's a very devout uh, participant in that and, game. And if you've played Ingress, you can clearly see how they could have used a lot of the data that they got from Ingress into this game. And so this is more or less Ingress with a Pokemon skin. Uh, well, okay. well it's, more than, it's more than that, but it's it feel it gets that feel when you start going to it's more uh, of a sister product it, than it is a iteration. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. But man, it is fun. It's addicting. Mm. And everybody and their brother is playing this damn thing. <laughs> when I drove when I've driven around for the last two days, I can't even tell you how many people I see just walking around like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even more so. The, I mean, everybody looks at their well, phone. And, and, I, and I love the memes. I love the memes where the where you know, you, you got a picture of a of a dog pooping. And on top of the poop is a Pokemon just chilling, yeah. you know, because it's, it's the the augmented reality. So you flip your phone and you can actually look and it shows the camera view and then it augments the Pokemon on top of whatever you're actually looking at. So, yeah, the, the memes are going crazy, man. Twitter is lighting up with this stuff. It's so fun. 
Oh, it's it, I'm, it's. I'm not, I'm not. I've never played Pokemon. I've watched my kids play it, but I had to try it because it, 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 everybody's talking about it, and it's fun. It's so it's so interesting to watch other people do things with it, and uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, a quick story today after work, I stopped in at the shop at real quick, and I was like, you know what? I haven't opened this app on base. So I opened it up. First of all, not a goddamn Pokemon to be found on that base. However, I saw something on the horizon. I was like, ooh, what's this? And it was a Pokestop. That's where you go to get, like, free po- Pokeball, uh, Pokeball and whatnot. Yeah. I was like, hmm, it's over at the air park. It's only, like, a block away. Screw it. I'm going to drive over there. So I drove over there, and I hop out of the car, and this other car pulls up, and I see a guy just kind of sitting there on his phone. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So my old geocaching instincts kicked in, where you don't want the muggles to know what you're doing mm-hmm. so i was like hmm I'm in the air park hmm let me read this placard next to this this airplane on a stick <laughs> and then so I, I the guy wasn't looking at me so i pulled my phone out real quick and did you know check to see what was up and all, all this, this kind of stuff well the guy is out of his car at this point and he's looking at his phone too and then we both do this thing where we kind of like look over at each other <laughs> and <laughs> He walks up to me. He's like, he's like, you're not by chance playing a game on your phone. And I was like, <laughs> he didn't even want to say uh, it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> Mutually assured like, embarrassment, right there. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, and then what follows was like forty. Five seconds of awkward conversation. I was like, "Yeah, all right, man. I I gotta go." <laughs> because you know he's way more into it than you are. Right. Right. So. <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah. I, um. I uh. I don't know if my kids are playing it or not. I I I don't think they are because they they've been stuck in the hotel room all day. And I say stuck as in they had the opportunity to leave mm-hmm. and they chose to sit around and do nothing but iPad it all day. So um. And yeah, I just use iPad as a uh, as a verb. Um, so I don't know if they're actually what they're doing with it, but, uh, I'm sure that'll change over the next couple of days. Right. Right. So, oh man. Hey, uh, you have one of these. And I say you, because I clearly do not have one myself. It's <laughs> right. I've just been far too busy between the new job and trying to get the new house. There's no, not a chance. I'm so excited to have finally. Once I get into this house, I'll be able to spend actual time doing the things that I really enjoy doing. So, um, tell us about. Uh, oh, damn it! <laughs> so <laughs> to continue the tradition, <laughs> I chose talk by a speaker with an impronounceable name. Prasant uh, Czech Roberti. <laughs> yes, let's go with that. Oh my gosh! All right, his talk was called "Clues to Prehistoric Times Found in Blind Cave Fish." Hmm. Also, probably the longest title for a TED Talk ever. <laughs> let's get oh there. my gosh! <laughs> uh, so this guy, he goes digging around in caves looking for fish and fossils and things. Okay. And um, anyway, so he, what what he's into is called ichthyology which is the study of fish and he started out with a joke saying that ichthyology is the coolest of all of the ologies because it has the word yolo in it (laughs) dating your talk much (laughs) yeah oh then he's like you all you young people in the audience will get what i'm saying Oh, oh man god damn it yeah uh, but well, no, it's actually I mean, kind of an if, interesting. If you think about it, if he's, if he's into digging up uh, ancient species and stuff and, and studying, <laughs> it, it kind of fits. I mean, it's it's part of the theme, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. It was actually kind of an interesting talk because he was talking about how you can find a species of fish, a new species, and you can learn a, about the, the characteristics and the, and the DNA and things. Mm-hmm. And you, you can find the the closest relative to the fish, and it could be – like, like, for example, this fish he found in southern Indiana, and it was the uh, the name translates to something like Hoosier cave fish or something. And the closest relative to it is from 
I think Australia, like someplace like super far away. And he said that this happens all the time with species of cave fish yeah. finding their closest relative, like a continent away. And he said, what's really cool about it is that you can create kind of a map, kind of the, the Pangea theory mm -hmm. of when, when earth was all one landmass or, you know, landmasses that are separated now where they used to be and how long ago and, and things like that. It was, it was pretty interesting. The, uh, thing I liked the most about the talk, though, is about halfway through the talk, he's showing a picture of one of the, the fish that he found, and it looks just like a turd. <laughs> so definitely go watch it and, and watch out for the turd fish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw a turd fish earlier today, but, uh, you know, that was after lunch. So, um, oh, now, now these, he's studying actual live fish, right? Yes, yes. So these aren't like fossils or nothing like, you know, because I find fossils a little bit boring, to be honest with you. There's, there's too much presumption and stuff like that. When you actually find a new, well, even if it's not a new species, just you you find these species that are, are uh, uh, so completely, like, disparately different from everything that we have on the surface. It just, it blows me away. I love that stuff. Right. And, well, he, he looks at fossils, too. Like, he, he studies whatever he can get his hands on as yeah. far as fish because he likes the he likes finding the links and finding, um, you know, just new characteristics and what, what they might be able to do to further science. Right. Uh, he's talking about, you know, possibly helping cure blindness, um, just all, you know, all kinds of interesting facets of this. So he looks at everything, but he's he's primarily into the live fish. Gotcha. <laughs> the, the live turd fish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. That's uh, the one that you encountered. So would this would this be a recommend or a non rec? Yes, yes, it's definitely a rec. Look for the turdfish. <laughs> if only because it's called the turdfish. Um, <laughs> awesome. I named the turdfish. Yeah, you, you named it turdfish. That's okay. Copyright uh, Kent Fleur uh, or trademark Kent Fleur. Trademark RMP twenty sixteen. Oh, there you go. Well, fuck it. Um, so. Our, our main topic tonight is something that, uh, that, that I don't want to say that I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm reserved to talk about because it's something I really think is very important to our military. And we do like to touch upon these military stories every once in a while whenever there's a, there's a good one that comes up that, that affects uh, uh, society at large. You know, if we just did a military podcast, it'd be boring as hell for you and I and <laughs> watching yeah, well but, uh, I, I think your reservation for this topic i'm not going to give it away i'll let you introduce it but i think your reservation for the topic is that it's something that you don't directly relate to and it's hard to understand it, maybe the perspective of the people that it affects the most yes yes that that would definitely be something some, some part of it um and i got i got this article from the air force times it's a it's a weekly newspaper that is all dedicated to Air Force news and military news. Um, so there, there's the cover. And uh, the, the, the headline of it is, Pentagon has new rules for transgender, uh, transgender troops serving openly. Right. Now, the reason this is very interesting is because earlier this week, I, I was at a briefing, and the briefer, well, one of the briefers, was... So perception, simply my perception, it was a woman who was abnormally tall. Now, not like freakishly tall, but abnormally tall. You know, not like six, Brianna Parth, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, she, she, was, she was taller than me, and I'm 6'2". Okay, so that's abnormal for, for a woman. Well, I, I don't know if I'd call it abnormal. It's... Um is it less normal? common, perhaps less common. <laughs> it's, abnormal, you think it's, like it's outside. You know. It's outside the eighty percent. I get you know. It's sure, it's, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, common. <laughs> spoke spoke with a with a very deep manly voice, mm. and had fingernails colored and hair colored, and the hair was long, way longer than what a what a man could have, but way shorter than most women that I encounter in the military have. Okay. So there's a question there, of and I brought this up to you and I put it, out, put it out there on Twitter. If I can't tell what gender you are, how am I as an NCO or a senior NCO supposed to enforce standards when the standards are different for different genders? Right, right. And that this was 
Tuesday that this came up, or maybe Wednesday. Um, and I thought that that in and of itself was an interesting question. And, it, you know, if you're offended by that, then go suck it, because I'm just asking a question. You know? Right. So, all right. So l- l- let me tell you wh- where I'm at, um, just right off the, right off the bat. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was now, that a letter came out from – Maybe it was the secretary of the Air Force or chief of staff or somebody. I don't remember. But I saw something in my email about uh, something something about the trans, transgender thing. Or maybe it was maybe it was on the uh, Holloman Air Force Base homepage. I don't remember. Uh, well, anyway, you know, what I thought that I remembered was that the new rules would be introduced soon and implemented over the course of – of a year as the force is educated S- same way they did with the don't ask don't tell uh, right, right. feel um so i guess the impression that i got was uh don't start i don't even know what the right word is uh coming out or uh, I, I don't i don't know the vocabulary uh but don't start coming out yet because we haven't defined the rules mm. that's kind of the impression that i got okay. so that it's interesting to me that you know somebody somebody's allowed to be out when just like you said we don't know the rules so right. how do we inform well i no, say we the, the royal we because i'm no longer a senior in co i i uh I, i'm not trying to say this, that this individual was transgendered in any way shape or form you know that's clearly not my place i i you know i'm not trying to insinuate that or anything else it was just well, a matter of it was confusing to me on the surface Ah, okay. And the, and the thought kind of popped into your head that, that yes. what if this person is trans, how 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 would I know right. what, what standard to enforce? Right. As we blur these lines, where am I going to objectively approach this? And it, it reminded me a lot of back in the uh, the late 90s, uh, well, yeah, late 90s, early 2000s, when, when I first started really becoming aware and started paying attention to other people and their standards and things like that women would have a beard they would have like actual beards you know it's i guess it's uncommon but you well, know, it's like whisker, little you know some whiskers yeah, on that the or, or they'd have the little little corner stash going yeah yeah it, it was always an awkward conversation like you know it to, to the best of my memory the the afi didn't say anything about women having to shave or anything else you know so women could have just this burly beard and be like whatever however right. that's not the case so I don't know when it changed, if it changed, whatever else. But at some point, it was my responsibility as an NCO to tell them they had to get it, the hair off their face. Mm. You know, and that was an awkward conversation. Like, see, that's that's interesting to me because I don't. I, I remember AFI thirty six twenty nine three, which is our dress and appearance mm-hmm. instruction. Um, I remember saying that that males must shave the blah 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 blah. Right. I don't anything under the female. Uh, category or whatever. So exactly, it's always been this like this gray area, like you know it, you it, or you know for a while there, women uh, in uniform could have the the stockings on, and it didn't matter if the hair poked through or whatever else. And then they cleared that up and said, no, it can't poke through. That creates a conversation, you know. So now me and and especially especially when it's a conversation of okay, uh, you know, Airman Airman Snuffet. <laughs> you, you've got hair poking through your pantyhose. You need to go and eliminate that. However, you're going to do it. That needs that needs to stop. Oh, <laughs> okay. What are you looking at my legs for? Oh, for God's sake. Okay. But, but that's yeah. there, especially yeah. in, in this culture of of, of super uh, sensitivity to all things sexual and and discriminatory. True. Um, True. You know, th- there's this constant battle, this this gray area that, like, yeah, if you're a hardliner, you can do it, but. You know, if you just want to go by the rules every single time, but nobody goes by all the rules all the time, mostly sure. because nobody can remember all the rules all the time. Right. And even if you could, it's almost impossible to be 100 percent in compliance 100 percent of the time. Right. Exactly. I, I'll go as far to, to say that it is, in fact, impossible. So this article, however, brings up a couple different points. And I was one of the few people that I know uh, serving actively that when 
the don't ask don't tell repeal was lifted i was supported it completely openly and outwardly i was like yes this is this is awesome this should have been done a long time ago right <clears throat> excuse me it's the right thing to do because gays and lesbians and by whatever have been serving forever in, since right. the history right. of so why you know anyway let's not get into that keep going right. So, but but it, it didn't pass over like it wasn't a, a fly by night, you know. This thing, there's still a lot of discrimination against it, whether it's open or in closed conversations or whatever else. There's still a lot of people that don't feel that it should be, you know, that we should have gays in the military. I'm a little bit more liberal on that front. I don't understand why we have gender separated bathrooms. That's just me. I figure if you're going to be, you know, if you're going to serve in the military, you should be responsible enough to keep your pecker in your pants and not rape anybody, whether it's male or female. And I don't think having, you know, showers that are separated is going to stop that if it's going to occur. You're not providing opportunity. The opportunity is always there. You know. Okay, I'll I'll differ with you a little bit on that. Um, like, uh, are you talking open bay showers? No, 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 not open bay showers. I'm just talking about we have. We'll have a shower tent for males and a shower tent for females. Yeah. Okay. You know, it, there's still room. Uh, anyway, like the, the, you, you have a private shower, but it's a matter of it's a completely oh, separate okay. building. It's, okay. You know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't see why they couldn't just put a curtain in between the two, I, and you know, and have one half males and one half females. I, I don't. I, I don't see anyway. Um, so this right here, this struck me as odd, and my wife summed it up very, very nicely when she mentioned it, and I'm not going to say these are her words because they're clearly not, because I'm the one talking. Um, <laughs> but here, here's, the, here's, here's the part that I want to I get to, and I'm going to quote almost all of this. Uh, now transgender troops will no longer be considered medically unfit for military service. By October, transgender troops may begin an official process to change gen gender in the military personnel management systems. The Pentagon will pay for health care support related to gender transition in cases where a military medical doctor determines that it is necessary according to the new policy. Mm -hmm. Let me get into that a little bit, a little bit further on. Many details remain unclear. Senior military leaders will have 90 days to draw up a detailed implementation plan that will address issues that include, and I'm not going to go through all of them here, just a couple, how the military health system will provide care to transgender troops to include medical support for gender transitions. Okay. When transgender service members will begin adhering to a different gender's grooming standards and uniform wear rules. And how and when a transgender service member will transition to new physical fitness standards. Now, those are the three big ones that I want to address. Mm -hmm. The first one is, and I'm going to kind of go out of order, when a transgender service member will begin adhering to different genders, grooming standards, and uniform wear rules. I don't see why there's a difference between the two. Agreed. Absolutely. And I, I think that's going to be the first fucking thing to go. I, I think that's the first line that's going to cause problems immediately. Yep. Yep. And, okay. So, so and, that, and that goes right back to the conversation I was having on Wednesday. That's what actually how this all feeds in together. Next, how the military health systems will provide care to transgender troops to include medical support for gender transitions. They're talking about hormone therapy, breast augmentation, and other surgeries. Right. Right, possibly so, reassignment surgery. Yes. So here's what here's the here's the part that really that really kicks me right in the nuts. I paid for my own fucking braces because I couldn't eat apples. Right, right. Well, it did say. Didn't you say in in the article? He said when medically necessary. Right. So what does that mean? Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on that just a little bit. About 10 years ago, they decided that the Air Force and the military in general would pay for spouses to have breast augmentation and reduction surgeries because of different medical issues. And that went through a spat of holy shit and everybody and their brother wanted to try to get in there and do it. Some people <laughs> actually did it. I know um, t at least two people that I, that I worked with their wives got their breasts reduced because of back pain and another one had their breasts augmented because of uh, confidence issues is what it really comes down to. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I didn't like that either. Completely paid for by the military system. 
Mm-hmm. And yet, you know, there, like it just seems like we're we're the system is bowing to a certain demographic and not taking care of the 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 others. Like, if you have, if you have a bona, like, uh, it just it it boggles my mind. And yeah, it's a little personal because I did pay for my own fucking braces, you know? Right. And, and that was only, what, a couple thousand dollars. Like, you know, and I paid for myself. Now my mouth is fine. I've not had any dental problems forever. So it just, it doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah. So uh, to, to back it up a little bit, what, um, if you don't mind me asking, what demographic do you think the military is, um, uh, bowing to i guess uh the gay and lesbian community with the with well okay with the, the in this particular instance it's the transgender community okay in the previous instance it was military spouses because it wasn't military members getting getting the, the surgeries done maybe it was but not from what i saw yeah i i, I don't know i i remember that was a thing is when, like, we when we were at kadena or whatever yeah but I don't, I don't remember having any any like exposure to it. Yeah, we had we had several. Yeah, hmm. and it it just it drives me nuts that that certain things are made such a priority. And and how many people are going to abuse this? How many people are going to come in the military specifically because the military will provide this service? So mm-hmm. now, gender reassignment is on par with education and seeing the world and patriotism. <laughs> uh, it, like, well, it'll be it'll be interesting because I, I would be, uh, man, I mean, d- d- I can't put anything past people because people, people are going to do whatever. Right. Uh, but I don't see that. I don't see there being like all of the transgender population or community just like, all right, fuck it. We're all joining the military now. And and, and I understand that. I'm not trying to insinuate that they will. But, you know, when yeah. when do these things become? Saying saying you can't come in is one thing. Saying we'll help you along is something completely different. Yeah, well, I did read uh, that. I don't even remember where I read. It's probably the same the same letter that I couldn't I couldn't remember the source. Um, where the medical necessity or um, uh, something about me- medical services or something, it's. Oh, 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 it was for the uh, the actual reassignment, uh, whether it was in Mill PDS or the um, Deers, the or the physical, like you know, actual medically reassignment. Mm-hmm. Um, something about I, I believe it was a one year stable, like emotionally stable. Eight, 18, eighteen months. Eighteen months. Okay, 18 for months. the the gender identity, like you're mentally like like I was born a male, but I am. I've been for a year and a half now living life as a woman. Right. I'm, I'm, my, it, my mind is right. This is what, this is me, you know. Yeah, it states in there. That it's, it's basically an 18 month um, uh, soft uh, 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 transition before okay. you start going into the, the hard transition, if you will. Right. So that, that makes me think that there's going to be like um, counseling, like um, perhaps right. mental right. services to, evaluate if this is you know if this is real first and if you are in fact um, you know mentally fit to be in the military because I imagine that some people that have this um, uh, like identity crisis or what have you might have uh, I guess an accompanying gender dysphoria is that a, is that a disorder yeah, or what well, is that? they they call it a disorder the feeling that one's biological gender is the opposite of the one he or she identifies with emotionally and psychologically that's okay. gender dysphoria that's the i well, guess yeah, the medical I, term for it i would imagine medically speaking i i imagine that there's a fine line between the disorder and just uh you know personal identity mm-hmm. from a medical standpoint i bet I, I imagine there's a fine line um so yeah I, I i guarantee there's there's mental health evaluation that goes on during that 18 month period yeah it's it's gonna be uh it's gonna be pretty interesting to see how it all flows out and how it how it um 
comes about and, and uh it's just one more major transition between the different you know services changing the way they, they rate people and the rack and stack and how people are promoted and stuff like that and then you mm-hmm. kick this in there it's it's a huge transition that the military is going through and i hope everybody the best but i'm glad i've only got a limited amount of time left because it's it's I, I don't see it going i don't see it going without uh, without problems unfortunately right absolutely absolutely so. Uh, and uh, so speaking of problems, you know, you know what this means, though. Hmm. That we're, we're the old guys now. Well, yeah, we're the. When we first came in, we had some some old master sergeants that were like, "Back in my day, we used to smoke weed on the flight line." Well, first of all, probably bullshit. But the ones that weren't, like, uh, okay, grandpa, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, we're them now. We're them. Back in my day, men were men. <laughs> well, I remember, I remember um, right after MEPS the first time we went through, and it had the question on there that was, um, are you now or have you ever identified yourself as gay or homosexual or something like that? The question was on there. It was the very last question on one of the forms we had to do. And the question was still there, but it had been, like, markered out. Yes, and then they yes, zeroed it, and you can still read the question through them. Through, and we talked about it. We were like, what, what kind of bullshit is that? Like, why is that even a question? Like, even in high school, when, when neither one of us knew anyone that was openly gay, right. we, we were both like, that's, that's kind of retarded. Like, why was that ever <laughs> a question? And here we are 21, 20, yeah, 21 years later going, why is this even a question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. So, um, okay. But back um, to my <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we, there, there's a, there's a, one more thing that we want to talk about, and that's geekandgamergear.com. Yep. Cool website, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's got uh, lots of cool shit on it. Uh, go there, get your geek gear, get your gamer gear. Yeah. Way bitching promo right now. Geek, <laughs> geekandgamergear.com. Use the, the promo code Ritual Misery, get ten percent off your first purchase, and uh, it helps us out a little bit. So go and do that. That's a geek. Oh yeah. The letter N gamergear dot com. So that's the fun stuff. Now, so I I went to Verizon. They have a new plan. Supposedly you get thirty percent more data. That's cool. It costs roughly the same as the old plans. That's cool. You get rollover data that only lasts one day, one month, by the way. It's not like singular is old. You, you, the rollover minutes would last for a year. Um, I feel this is worthwhile because this is Verizon, a major company, making changes to the way they've done the plan for a couple of years now. And anytime you see one company do this, you see others. And maybe the others have done it lately, but I haven't noticed it. So you're a Verizon customer. Yes. What kind of? I have not... What, what what plan are you on, as far as your data goes? Are you still yeah, on some got, old plan? Yeah, well, it's not the the old old plan, not the one that I signed up with originally. I upgraded upgraded, I guess, uh, to a newer version. So I'm on the I'm on one generation old now. What's that? You transgraded. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm on the plan where I get three gigabytes shared. Uh, you know, so all the the phones on my account, three gig- gigabytes shared for like, what is it, forty bucks or fifty bucks or something? Oh my gosh, I envy you. <clears throat> because I use so little data. Yes, because I'm on the twenty four gigabyte plan. Yeah, I don't understand how you use so much data. I get it that you've got a bunch of phones, but stop fucking watching Netflix while you're walking around. Like what the fuck? Twenty four gigabytes, dude. That's that's a problem. So <laughs> we've only ever come close to the cap once, and that's when we didn't have internet at all. So we were using our phones <laughs> to hot hot uh, hot sync over to our computers and stuff like that. Um, it'll be interesting now that we're all settling down, and we'll we have uh, we'll have Wi Fi in our house again and things like that. See where it goes. We'll probably drop that down considerably. Yeah. However, I like my phone to operate exactly the same all the time. So if I want to watch a YouTube video, I just watch a YouTube video. Like I don't consider, oh, I've got, I should wait for later to watch this or whatever else. I just use my phone. Like it's, I just use it. 
Right. And, uh, you know, we've got seven phones on the line. If you go, if you were to go like two gigs per, that's already 14 gigs. Yeah. You know, and two gigs is simple to blow through. Um, uh, see, I, I've got three, fo- three phones on the plan, three gigabytes. That's that equates to one gigabyte a person. Mm-hmm. We, we've only come close to that. Like, maybe three times ever uh no no we, <laughs> i use i i well yeah wow well. <laughs> let, let me look real quick <laughs> so this month now we are about we are roughly halfway through my billing cycle right now and uh it's it's not pretty Oh my God! And Verizon's new app makes you accept the terms of terms of service every single time. Really? Yes. I, and, this is the first time I've opened the new version of the app yeah. and not have any sort of pop up or maybe, maybe it's maybe, no. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's <laughs> and I was sitting in the store today and it wouldn't load up anything except for the uh, the in store menu, which was pissing me off. Oh, I just realized I have four gigabytes. Oh, look at you. Um, I have 67% remaining with 14 days left in my cycle. Yeah. So I've, that, that is the new plan that we just upgraded to 24 gigs from, we were on 16 or 18. Yeah. Um, I'm using, I've used, well, we collectively have used less than four tenths of a gigabyte. So far this billing cycle. And how long, how long into the billing cycle are you in? Um, probably a week, about a week. Well, eight days. So today's the eighth. So eight, eight days. <laughs> <laughs> I like the math right there. Um, yeah, I, uh, oh my God. Now it's not, like, like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> like, I just want to, I just want to see. Is that the iOS 10 beta that uh, we opened the show with? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to see my data chart. Like, they've, they've changed all the menus. Well, the you're on Verizon, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, when I open the Verizon app, it's the first thing. It's there, right there. I don't click anything. Are it's you on the new app or the old app? The new app. Oh, that just, no. And it's exactly the same as the old app. No, no. This is what pops up if you can... I don't know if you can see it, but this is what pops up when I open it. It's the the chart, right? No, I'm, I'm, I was looking at. I was trying to find the uh, the one that breaks it out by line. Oh, which shit. I found, but I'm not going to show it because it's got a lot of phone numbers on there. Um, oh. So I have used 10 percent this month. I've used 2.4 gigs in half a month. Uh, my let's see, my no, actually, next up would be my sister. No, my wife, and then my sister-in-law. And they've yeah. used about so, a gig and a half. So we, we would probably cut our plan down gross. considerably. Yeah, However, it's not gross usage, but it's considerably more than, than what my household uses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've used two, two and a half gigs myself in the last two weeks. So, yeah. two and a half weeks. Yeah. Um, all right. So there's that. I want to make sure everybody was aware of that. Just go and check your stuff. See if it saves you some money. You might want to check it, dude, because it just came out yesterday. So if it saves you some money or gives you more data for the same amount of money, why not sign up, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's that. Is there anything else that you want to talk about this week? Because I'm about to go on a little bit of a mini rant. Um, no, you know what? Go, go, go ahead. If I have anything to say, I will, I'll, I'll pipe up. All right. So this week, <clears throat> this week, Hillary Clinton was essentially exonerated from her part in the emails, uh, classified emails and uh, the the lying and everything else that went through her private server. Um, Depending on your view on Hillary Clinton, maybe you think she's a saint and she never did anything wrong. Maybe you're like me and you just think the whole system is corrupt and she's just a, a spokesman for it. However you look at it, she's getting away with something. Whether the intent was there or not, she's still getting away with something more than what any military member would ever get away with. Then we had two more shootings this week of essentially what comes down to white cops shooting 
black um, pedestrians or, or citizens. One right after the other. In both cases, it was taped. There's video of the of, of the majority of the confrontation, if not the whole thing. In the case of one, there's multiple views of the entire confrontation. In both cases, it seems pretty ridiculous on the surface. I'm sure there's other details or whatever else, but on the surface, it looks really, really just completely ridiculous. And then last night, there were... There was a, a peaceful protest, a, a registered, known, peaceful protest in Dallas, downtown Dallas, where the police were lined up on the sides of the roads to make sure that there's no traffic going through the protesters or anything else. It was, it was sanctioned and everything else. And then someone opened fire on the cops, injuring a total of 12, five of which died so far, last, last time I saw I am all for revolution. I welcome it. I think the current system is heavily biased towards the ultra rich. I think the middle class is disappearing. The lower class, the, the, the very bottom of our society as far as wealth is concerned, is, is being taken advantage of, is, is treated almost in, in, in economical or in, in, in economic slavery. And I don't think that the current political system is adequate or forceful enough to make the change that is for the good of the greater people. Those are my feelings. I think we are primed and ready for a revolution of sorts. But I don't think we're at the point where we need to be killing cops that had nothing to do with other incidents simply because they're wearing the uniform. We're not, we're, we're not there. There's no reason for that. There's never going to be a reason for killing people that are innocently protecting the peace. There is time. There, there, there's, there's room for change. There's, ways to make that change happen. And I don't know that violence isn't part of the overall equation. When there's a, there's a major upheaval of society and of government and of uh, culture, violence is almost inherent in that. However, we have not exhausted all possible paths to reclaiming our country for our people, for the middle class, for the people that work, for the people that are carrying this country on their shoulders. Before we go shooting peace officers, we should be all writing our congressmen, showing up at the, at the voting booths and actually voting these corrupt sons of bitches out of office making sure that our government knows we mean business the legal way and using the ways that were that have been granted to us and promised us by the constitution that holds this whole government together we should be using that we should be exhausting that as a resource we should actually get off our lazy asses and make change happen the legal way before we ever reach to violence Violence should be a last resort. The Second Amendment, which I'm a huge proponent of, gives me the right to carry weapons, to have guns and own guns and firearms or whatever else you want to call it, in order to protect myself from the oppression of the government. It says nothing about going and sniping cops who are protecting a peaceful demonstration. And anyone that says anything otherwise is completely full of shit. We are ready for a revolution. We are not at the point where violence is needed or even warranted. There are still nonviolent legal ways to change the system. And if we care so much to go shooting people, 
we should all be going to the booths and voting out the corrupt pieces of shit that we've got in office. Way before we should be shooting anybody. So that's what I have to say about all that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that was, that was a lot of words. Uh, yeah, I mean... <sighs> Me personally, in my in my daily vocabulary, I, I'm not a big fan of the the term revolution because it carries with it, uh, you know, d- d- no matter how, w- in what context you're talking about it, it carries with it the connotation, I guess, of violence, uh, violent overthrow. That's what, at least me and 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 I would vent- I would venture to say that most people, uh, that's the that's the image that comes to mind. Um, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, uh, change is needed, for sure, but beyond doubt, I, it doesn't matter who you ask and what they, what point of view they take, two opposing points of view. Everybody knows that that change needs to occur, um, and I'm with you 100 percent that we need to exhaust all of our legal ways before we resort uh, resort to violence. Um, shootings of of police officers in reaction to police shooting a couple of people uh, presumed innocent um, yeah what 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 did you what did you do what did you do there you didn't you didn't help the surviving family you sure shit didn't bring the person back to life um, you're not furthering the cause the people that are um, uh, not seeing your point of view just further deepened their opposing point of view. Um, Plus you fucking killed five people. Destroyed five families, um, a community. I mean, what, 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 no. Violence as the answer to violence is nope. 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 No. Okay. So we're we're pretty much done it then. That's, That's all I got to say about that. Yeah. Um, flipping things over a little bit. Uh, we do have some listener mail this week. Ah, yeah. Good, good. Um, what, what? Ryan writes in to say, Hey guys, cool show. Thanks. That's the, that's, it's important. <laughs> I was wondering, wondering if you had heard about the guy that attacked Google headquarters because he thought they were stalking him. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thanks. What? I hadn't heard about What the fuck is this man? Like, have you heard about this? I did, dude. I heard about this a few days ago. <laughs> oh, shit. Have you didn't hear about this? No. <laughs> okay, so this guy, I don't remember all the details, but this guy gets arrested for, um, I think he was shooting out the windows at, at a, a Google office building. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Because it was, like, he wasn't shooting at people or anything. He was just shooting the windows out of the building. And... They're like, what do you do? What the fuck? He's like, these motherfuckers are are stalking me, and so they're like, well, well, hold on, hold on. A few days ago, like a whole bunch of of Google uh, Street View cars got fucked up. Did you have anything to do with that? And he's like, hell yeah. <laughs> this guy he made a bunch of Molotov cocktails and was trying to blow up the the Google Street View cars because. He, he thought that the Google Street View cars were were stalking him, basically, like like following him around town. He said he had a notebook full of the times and locations, and I guess he was like, you know, losing his mind because they won't leave me alone. I got to do something about it. Well, <laughs> did, did anybody get hurt? No, no. Okay, okay. In, in fact, I, I, in fact you know, most of the cars that had Molotov cocktails thrown at them weren't even hurt. The pavement got a little burnt, but the cars were fine. <laughs> I'm all for this then. As long as no one got hurt, man, this is just pure entertainment. <laughs> oh, man. It was so good when I, when I read that shit. I'm surprised I didn't say anything to you about it. No, that's, that's, that's insane. That's awesome. Oh, man. I had a good laugh over that one. Thank you, Ryan, for bringing that, bringing that in there. That is, that is amazing. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's, uh, yeah, thanks, dude. 
if you uh, if, if you got some crazy ass story you'd like to share with us or, or some news item that we're liable to miss, uh, just email us podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Let us know what you're thinking. And uh, man, oh, <laughs> that's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> that's cool. Another place to put stuff is our subreddit, which is ritualmisery dot reddit dot com. I, um, Kent, people can find you at rm underscore del noche on the Twitter. Yep. Also, if you're a beer guy like me, go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche. All right. You can find me uh, at Ethan Kane. Um, and if you'd like to support the show, you can cru- cruise on over to ritualmisery.com slash swag. We've still got t-shirts up there and everything else. We need to we need to get in there, revamp that, and throw some more stuff on there and everything else. But uh, that's always there. And a little bit of that gets kicked back to us. It's exactly $1 of anything that you buy. gets kicked back to us. helps us make this show a little bit better. So cruise on over and do that. Um, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. And you can submit ideas on our subreddit, like he said, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. And, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Um, and thank you, dear listeners and watchers. <laughs> this has been your... Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> See you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this bro. <laughs> oh man, so good, so good. Man, that was... T- Great, no Skype issues for 98% of the show. Right at the end, as you're doing the close, shit got all wacky. It, 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 you missed your outro completely, like totally skipped it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were like dragging out the intro. I thought you were saying, this has been. Oh, no. Hey, oh, uh, oh. Let, let, me, let me tell everybody that we're not live anymore real quick. We, okay. We, we are, but we're not. We're oh, not, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Show, show's over. Show's over. <laughs>